Well, we'll see at 835. Couple earnings reports, nuts and bolts of the economy. Stock down, CarMax down, not a good sign. But we'll talk about it with Mark Chaikin at 8.15. It's Thursday. We got a lot of work to do on pre-market prep. Welcome to Benzinga's pre-market prep. This is a volatile puppy here. It's all about execution styles and strategies. All right, folks, let's run down the commodities and futures. I guess I got to share my screen first, and I will do that. S&P 500 index futures spent very little time over unchanged, down 24 and a handles at 51.83 and a half. Will Wednesday's low hold uh, 76.50? I don't want to make a bet on that. The buck over 105, up a couple pennies, 105.05. TLT, because you guys like the TLT, we're down to 11 cents, 90.11. That was your tell yesterday. Crude in the red, 45 cents at 85.76. Gold in the green, up 680, but a couple lower highs in there at 23.55.10. Silver clinging to the 28 handle, up a couple pennies, 28.07. Bitcoin trying to remain in the 70K handle. Those Bitcoin futures were up $195 and 70,605. Let's bring in Triple D and AB at the same time here and get the show on the road. And I'm not going to bring up the Masters because there's a two and a half hour delay. Triple D. What do you think? What do you think about the price action? Will the uh, I, I think it was tech. I th- I think it was predicted on the show yesterday. I think we're at this market where interest rates matter to certain stocks and don't matter to other stocks. And those are the ones you want to have. Predictable rally in NVIDIA yesterday. We talked about it. Um, they turned around right off the opening print, couldn't stop buying it. And it was up 35 bucks from the low on a terrible tape. So, you know, when you're calling these things, you know, and the market's going straight down and your stock's going straight up, you're doing something right. Um, I think we're going to see more of the same here today. I think we're going to see a continuation. Again, maybe PPI changes the story here at 8.30. Things may change. Uh, but, you know, if it holds, TLT weaker, IWM is very weak here again. Oh. Interest rate sensitive stuff is just getting hit hard. And then it's flight to mega cap tech. Microsoft green. Apple green. Meta is trying to go green here. Well, it's not. It's just those those BS eight o'clock ticks there that are screwing us up a bet. <laughs> um, I think you're going to continue to see that separation here. And if we continue to see the inflation data hot, it's going to be the market that gravitates to what worked, you know, when we were still in higher rates for longer or even an increasing rate environment. And that's the tech trade. So, you know, counter to what everybody thinks, the big bubble in NVIDIA, the big bubble in tech, that held up. Fairly well yesterday. It wasn't the big bubble in tech that was bursting yesterday. What was bursting yesterday was the catch-up trade. The thought of a catch-up trade that IWM, Tom Lee, going to go up 50% this year. No. No, it's not. IWM now breaking down, almost down on the year here. I think we started the year right around this price. So as much as the S&P has had a fantastic year, IWM has not. I I thought maybe we could get the catch up trade, but when you get inflation data like we got yesterday, Will Robinson abort mission on the catch up trade. Yeah, and yesterday, I mean, Dennis, you did call that Nvidia would be, you know, kind of a flight to safety during the day after the hot number. Obviously, people want to sell their interest rate sensitive stocks in, in sectors like regional banks. Uh, semiconductors outside of NVIDIA, you know, you looked at, well, actually SMCI had a decent day, all things considered, but AMD continued to get crushed. I mean, we should talk about that, uh, just the divergence you're seeing in AMD against NVIDIA, but uh, that's why you guys got to watch the show. I mean, Dennis called that perfectly with NVIDIA. The, the stock opened lower like everything else did and then shot higher um, basically immediately after the open and ended up being one of your best performers on the day. I think a lot of people would have expected, oh, no interest rate cuts. Like you said, Dennis, tech's going to get crushed. NVIDIA is going to be down. No, NVIDIA is a stock that performed well yesterday, despite the higher than expected inflation numbers. 
Um, and, you know, I mean, if we get, again, hot PPI today, I don't see why that trend wouldn't continue with some of these big tech names while you're looking at NVIDIA, Microsoft, Amazon, Apple, you name it. Those are the stocks that aren't going to be as hurt by higher interest rates. They can handle it. They're big enough. They can handle it. They'll be fine. It's the smaller stocks. It's the solar companies. Yeah. It's these growthy yeah. companies that will be hit um, more so than these big tech names. Yeah, I mean, and that's counter to what a lot of people think. You know, there's been so many people we know we talked about them, like Dan Nathan calling the bubble in Nvidia forever. Stock continues to go higher. Um, big smiles on his face yesterday as the market was down. The perma bear. Um, I just think we're just in this market where it's going to continue to rotate. I don't think we're going to go into this okay. sell. Okay. I just feel like it's a sell everything market. If they were going to sell everything. It was going to be yesterday because they did it in the pre-market. We talked about it on the show. We had literally every stock down except like a couple oil stocks. And then right at the 930 bell, separation started to happen. And they were coming in. They were buying tech stocks. Not that a lot of those closed red, but they didn't close that green. Or, they, or, that, or not that a lot of them closed green. But they, 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 they bounced off those. Loads. Like a stock like CrowdStrike was trading way down the pre-market. That one ended up, I believe, trading green. You know, we had talked about NVIDIA. That was an obvious one, um, really, you know, that it was going to probably find buyers. We're just in this market where it's not sell everything. It's not buy everything. Maybe, you know, one day we'll see that again. But we have been in the rotating market for, I feel like, years, really. It's a long time we've been rotating around, Joel. Like, when is the last time you get a, every single stock up or every single stock down? Maybe on some Fed speak for a day? Mm -hmm. But oh. We can clearly see the separation, and I nothing's clearer than QQQ versus IWM. The IWM has just been the dog, and I don't see this this changing with you know, the information that we got yesterday. Now, again, maybe PPI changes that. Maybe a cooler number would help the IWM, but nobody cares about inflation data than those small caps. You know what, Dennis? I'm just gonna you know I'm just looking at this Nvidia chart and. Um... You know, the circumstances are there, you know, uh, the interest rate trade versus the non-interest rate trade. Uh, but, I mean, I just look at the, the run that the stocks had and all things being equal, forgetting about interest rates, forgetting about, you know, the, the political and economic environment. Yeah. I just don't know if I just like be just like sticking my neck out here at 850 and saying, you know, boom, this thing is going back to 950. I mean, I'm not, it's just to me, the technicals, I think it's okay to take that kind of, you know, position. But I think if you're, you know, let's say if you're buying more, if you're, you know, you're adding to the position, then, I mean, I tried pick a level, you know, no level is perfect, but, you know, good support right on here under 850. I mean, you lose 850 and you're in an area where you traded up from 650 to 850 in 10 trading sessions. If there's anything we've learned, what goes up quickly can come down quickly. That's what we they've know. been saying for six months on this stock. I mean, I, 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 when we went to 500 to 600 to 700 to 800 to 900. I mean, if it wants to sell off, why is it not selling off yesterday? Joel? I don't know. It's got a red candle going on for the month. So I'll look at it on a monthly basis well, and I'll I mean, say... It's got to get back above 900. I mean, you want me to sell it at 700. I'm I mean, not I, telling you. Where I'm am I so, going? Where am I going? What do, you, what do you want me to put that money? I'm telling you not to buy more. I'm telling you not to buy more today. Where Where well. do you want me to put that money in, though, Joel? Here is the reason that NVIDIA doesn't sell off. Where am I going? IWM? That worked out really well. Where am I going with the money? Thank What's you. been better than the tech AI trade? What's been better? I don't, I don't know where to go with that money. I can go set and 5% and just stay in cash, but I don't feel like we're going into a crash market. I don't feel like it's like over. I feel like I was very impressed with the tape yesterday on the cues. You think that CPI data was hot. You know, AB, bring bring us back and rein us in here a little bit. But well, were you not impressed with? I was very impressed with the tech trade yesterday. Well, and, and we did, and we talked about yesterday how it's like if it ain't broke, don't fix it. The buy the dip trade has been working. The queues were down one and a half percent. Next thing you know, you look at it and it was down only nine tenths of a percent. The the queues went up six tenths of a percent from the open. So it's like, you know, I mean, you did see people going into that. I mean, I think to Joel's point as big as NVIDIA is and, and saying they're going to be fine with interest rates. 
uh, where they're at. I mean, it's still in growth mode. It's still doing this. So I wouldn't be surprised if the returns are more muted with higher interest rates. But I do think you're better off in NVIDIA than other tech trades out there. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I could see it going either way. I think, you know, pull any pullbacks, any real weakness in NVIDIA is a buying opportunity. Um, but you know, I, I see both sides of it. Let's uh, well, let's not just talk statement. NVIDIA though. Any, any, well, any weakness is a buying opportunity. The only thing I'm saying is that I see, I see these multiple low area at what? 845, 850. Well, actually, it's a little bit lower than that. All I'm saying is you can buy the dip. You can add to the position on anything, but you just, I, I would say if you're adding to your position, data, cost averaging up, which you always say is like you ruin some good positions. You do. If you do that, then just figure out, well, I'm going to buy more. I'm going to nibble more at 860. And if it goes to 835, then maybe I need to cut loose on the whole thing. That's the only thing I'm saying. I'm not saying. I don't think I'm cutting loose on the whole thing because I think the story is there. But you're making a good point. When you enter a trade and listen to Joel here, he's making a good point. When you enter a trade, you got to have a contingency plan because you know what? doesn't always work out. doesn't always work out. I wish I could be right 100% of the time. But if I'm right 52% of the time, you know what? I'm going to make a living here. I think it set up well. 830, 835. I think if you're putting it on for a trade, 860, 865, I think you're cutting out below that. But again, I'm still going to hold the core position because I, I, you know, I've sold some of it and it was a mistake. So, you know, I sold all my SMCI, obviously, and that's kind of worth the same spot. I sold part of my AMD. I was nibbling back into some of the AMD yesterday just because I feel like it, I feel like the story. And again, we need to separate. We need to separate trading and investing. When I'm Buying mm -hmm. stuff in the long-term portfolio, I feel like there's a story here still continuing. I feel like the AI story is in the early innings. I feel like I'm buying dips to add stocks that are going to benefit from that coming AI story. I think the AI story is in the first inning. Some of you don't think it's in the eighth inning. I think it's in the first inning. So if you think, and I do, not that I'm right, maybe when the ninth inning and AI is over, I think we're in the first inning. So which companies are going to benefit from it? The small caps? What? How the hell? They're going to benefit maybe from the cost cutting of cutting labor. You know, like AI is going to bring down their costs and stuff. So maybe they all benefit from it. But the direct beneficiary to all this is NVIDIA. But then you can go AMD, Microsoft. Where is the weakness in Microsoft? All I right, mean, we're, we... we're talking a bear market here all of a sudden. Everybody's starting to sell. The charts all look horrible. I don't see bad charts in Microsoft. The dang thing won't even go down. Now, it's getting goosed by Morgan Stanley high. today. It's getting a little goose by Morgan Stanley today. But no. It I, didn't I, go I, down yesterday, Joel. When Microsoft, look at the last five, six, seven days. I mean, we've been leaking on the S&P for basically a couple of weeks here now. Microsoft's flirting with the highs. Google making new highs. I mean, Amazon doesn't want to go down either making new highs. What's working, folks, is the trade that continues to work is a mega cap tech trade. And until we actually see, you know, when, you know when it's going to stop working is when we actually see inflation start going down. That's when they'll be like, okay, green light, buy everything else, and we're going to fly out of the mega cap tech trade. So I think as you see hot numbers, like we mm -hmm. saw yesterday, it actually equals buy mega cap tech and sell the rest of the crap. And that's right. what we saw yesterday, predicted on this show. It happened. I think it continues to happen. Now, again, Maybe at 830, everything changes. Maybe we get a cool number and the IWM lights up and the mega cap tech trade goes down. But I don't think we're going to go into this market where they just hammer mega cap sell tech because we've got inflation data. We've been selling anything market in a long time. We have not A long enough. time. Yesterday right. morning, we had it just for a brief you know, hour before the market opened and the money managers get in there and say, buy me some NVIDIA, <laughs> buy me some Microsoft, get me into all these things because I need to be in this tech trade. I mean, it's, it's a funny market, but it is not... This market is not that fearful here. Like we we've seen, you know, the market hold up. If it wanted to sell off, it should have did it a year ago. And again, maybe we did on some stocks. And again, you know, you just can't come in and buy everything blindly. I mean, ARKK has been an epic disaster, you know. So that's full of tech stocks, but there are full of tech stocks that are not printing money. You need those cash cow tech stocks. Those are the ones that the market is gravitating to, not you know the hopes and dreams here. The hopes and dreams trade is relying on inflation data, which is relying, obviously, because the interest rates are going to stay higher for longer. So hopes and dreams, I'm not going to buy into those stocks. 
until I start seeing inflation. Solid, kick back. solid analysis. And you've you been sticking with it. And you've been sticking with it. You with uh, with the solar stocks and the range sensitive stocks. I mean, you have a plan. You stick it to it. You broke me on my S and P eccentricity here. I'm going to talk about the IWM and the breakdown. I mean, it's very, very obvious. Why don't you short a, a boatload of IWM and buy a boatload of Qs? Well, that may be a trade here. But it depends. You know why I don't do that? Because the 830 number is coming. If the number is the other way, it'll go the other way. <laughs> All right, Us as traders, Mark, bring Mark in here. Bring Mark in here. We've bring got bring Mark in the conversation. Of bring of him in hot. All right, Mark Chaikin, Chaikin Analytics. Mark, I know you had some thoughts on this conversation. We're talking AI, we're talking tech stocks. What did you make of the price action yesterday? Yesterday was an overreaction in my view, but if rates if rates continue to go up and you see uh, 475 to 5% and it happens quickly, that's not good for stocks. It's the speed of the rate increase. as sort of like the frog in the boiling water. Uh, you know, it, but speed matters in rate hike and the response of the market. We, you know, we're in a piece of uh, territory here, uh, which I outlined in my email response to Joel last night. 5140 cash breaks on a closing basis. That, you know, then maybe we're vulnerable down to 5,000. Um, I've been in the camp three to five percent is all you're going to see. Some of my colleagues think six to eight percent pullback would be appropriate. I just don't see that in an election year, but uh, we'll have to see. But certainly at five percent, which is roughly five thousand on the S and P, you've got to be buying, putting cash to work. In terms of Nvidia, seven seventy five is my number, which would be roughly a one third retracement, thirty eight percent retracement of the move from the uh, the big low at three. I guess it's three seventy five up toward a thousand. Uh, clearly the big winner in AI, um, AMD chart does not look good to me. Hasn't looked good for about three weeks. Feels like it's rolling over and that makes sense. Over. It rolled we're down, over, six, but we're down that, 60 bucks yeah. on the highs. It got yeah. Me. I mean, in theory, you could get a head and shoulders break, uh, in, on the, uh, daily chart, but, uh, and that makes sense because they're not the innovator in this space. They're the follower. But here's an interesting trade, and you're, you you ask a good question, uh, Dennis. You know where do you go other than Nvidia? Qualcomm. I think Qualcomm is underappreciated. They have very hot new chip, which will get them off of mobile and onto computers. And here's a use case that I stumbled on that I really like. Now Qualcomm has a bullish rating in the power gauge. Zebra Technology, ZBRA. It briefly went bullish a week ago, and I was about to recommend it in one of our newsletters, and then it went back to neutral. So why do I like Zebra? Zebra is all about mobile computing devices. Think handheld scanners in supermarkets, in warehouses. They have partnered with Qualcomm, and they are able to do massive MML AI computations on a handheld scanner with no internet connection mm. because of a Qualcomm chip. And they're also partnering with Google uh, Cloud. So I think if you dig deeper, you see some really good opportunities. Now, Zebra has been doing scanners forever. Obviously, it's the supermarket scanner. But here's what's interesting. I got coupons in the mail from my local supermarket, ShopRite. They weren't just random coupons. They were based on what I've been buying. So they have an intelligent scanning system that knows what I've bought. And then they sent me eight coupons. Each one was focused on something I had bought within the last month. That's Caviar and champagne? Caviar and champagne? Uh, no, it's more like, well, it's not bananas. I can tell you that. But it's more like strawberries and, and, uh, and ka good. kashi That's cereal. Good. But <laughs> my point being, you're right. AI is in the first inning. This is a game changer. Look at what Jamie Dimon said. He finally got something right here in the last 12 months. There's no hard landing coming. <laughs> Jamie, sure. Jamie's had some that scares calls. me now. That scares <laughs> yeah, I know. me now. <laughs> but, but he said, you know, and I'm, I hope you quoted this on the show, that AI could be as impactful as electricity. I'm surprised he didn't say penicillin, you know, the, the printing press and the Internet. And I believe that. It is 
a life changer, not just a game changer because the, the advances in medical and so forth. So uh, obviously you got me on to a topic I'm very uh, pleased about because I haven't given you guys a chance to ask any questions. What so. do you think <laughs> the stocks, Merck? So well, obviously NVIDIA is there. Um, Qualcomm, I own that as well. I think it benefits. I agree with you. I own Qualcomm for a very long time. Continue to own it. What else? Like give us all those, you know, AI trades. Um, you know, that uh, you think. Yeah. The AI trades are tough, like UiPath, that's having that's struggling a bit. You know, these are the people who consolidate. I love ServiceNow at the right price. ServiceNow is probably my favorite big data, big uh, AI play. And it's been a winner for a long time. But that's the kind of company where they uh, integrate customer support, internal databases, uh, and sales into one coherent mass uh there's a stock that we're going to recommend that i'll talk about the next time that we're on that i think is a real big winner there but uh, anybody who's using ai in a proactive way to enhance the quality of their offerings and you you hit it on the, the nail on the head productivity across the board is going to improve because of ai but there are specific companies and zebra is is an example of one of them so uh, I'm also looking at the building and the construction engineering companies, which we've liked for quite a while. Uh, so Boise Cascade, Owens Corning, Fix in the air conditioning space, uh, any of the big construction companies, because infrastructure is going to be a big deal going forward. Uh, certainly during the election year and beyond, there's a lot of uncommitted federal funds. You're going to see projects announced, shovels ready, and so forth. So, um, and they haven't really pulled back very much. If you look, just take they a look at strong. take a look at Boise, uh, Joel, and you'll What's see what I'm talking about. What's the symbol on that one? BCC. Oh, the okay. So, uh, used to be a lumber. I mean, they're they're not pulling back very much because the the demand is huge for these. Uh, you know, uh, anything to do with big construction projects, not necessarily home building, but big construction. Uh, by the way, guys, I would like some chops because I didn't make the big money on the restoration hardware. Yeah, uh, we, Mark, we gave you time. love. Mark, we gave you love. We gave you love on that. It was a great but, call. We did. We gave we you did. some love after you left. You um, obviously the next day. What oh, a call! A fantastic call, Mark. It might be one of the best calls of the year. I yeah. think you know the option went up um, fifty times, five fifty x. Holy. <laughs> There yeah, well, go. the stock spiked up to over 350, and the April 5 expirations went under a buck, <laughs> and then for, they went up. Mark, for people that weren't here for that, can you – I remember it was right after the earnings report, right? And you said, I listened to the report. I listened to the CEO. There was nothing in there that you know justifies this move. This has got to come down, right? That was kind of the gist of the trade. It was worse than that. It was an hour and 49 minute conference call. And I said, it sounded like the guy was on speed. Yeah, that's and, right. so <laughs> and Joel took me to task for that. But uh, yeah, I mean, sometimes you just get lucky and you, you put two and two together and you get six. And that was that. But well, look, if it, you didn't make money on it, at least you're going to get your props on this show. I saw some people in the chat saying they made money on the puts that you, you recommended. Thanks. So. Uh, you know, at you least should put that on your commercials, Mark. Yeah, that, uh, you know, we'll, I want to know that AI stock. We're gonna find I, out. I need, right, I, go need ahead, go ahead. I need a tape of the show. Do you guys keep the tapes? Yeah, yeah, I'll send you yeah. a clip of it. So, Mark, uh, yes, and, grand, Mark, uh, Aaron, we'll send it over. Going, to you. going back to your point about the grocery store uh, coupons, I think that's an interesting uh, thing to to look at with the AI trade right now because a lot of it, like we're talking about, we're in the first inning. A lot of this stuff we're going to see the productivity is down the road. So I think it makes sense to look at the companies that right now what you need for AI to be effective is data. Look at the companies that have a lot of consumer data and grocery stores are one of the biggest ones. You Everyone puts their phone number yeah. into the thing. They know exactly what you're buying, when exactly. you buy it, how often you buy it. So what are other companies you know that have a lot of consumer data that can use that to help propel sales and increase productivity? Aaron, that's the best question I've ever been asked on the show. Oh, no, do, no disrespect. Uber. Who has more data than Uber on where you go, wh where you came from, how long you stayed. Unbelievable. And nobody I, I've seen has talked about Uber as a data source. 
Now, I'm sure there are privacy issues uh, more so than the supermarket knowing what you bought. And Uber is a great looking stock. Power gauge is bullish, has been for a while. I just never found a comfortable spot to buy it. And the valuations are always higher than you think they should be. But if you're looking for data legitimately, you know, obtain because there are people who are obtaining uh, data. What illegally. about Reddit? What about Reddit? Is Be that, before that, you that? leave that, that's a completely different conversation. I want to ask him uh, what I noticed when uh, Tesla had the the robo taxi headline there Friday Friday I think it was maybe it was Friday night when I was away. Uber fell two bucks on that. Do you see Tesla as a serious threat to Uber here with the robo taxi? Are they close to like Mu like Musk makes you believe that the robo taxis are coming next week? I don't think that's the case. But I mean, I think of robo taxi and I think, holy crap, that's a direct threat to Uber. Thoughts? I don't believe in anything Musk says anymore. He's desperate. His wealth is eroding with Twitter. And, you know, as we said on the show two weeks ago, one analyst said Tesla could drop to 14. I don't think Tesla's, uh, except in the battery space, I don't think Tesla's a viable uh, growth company anymore. So I, I don't believe a word that Elon Musk says. He's promised things that haven't happened in two years, trucks, buses, you name it. So, no, and and b drops like that are great buying opportunities for Uber, for a stock like Uber. That news related drops or, you know, how many times did Amazon announce some healthcare initiative and the uh, healthcare stocks would drop, you know, the, the pharmacy stocks and then rebound right away because it, it's just noise. Hey, two minutes coming on to the number Ooh. here, Mark. I don't know if you want to uh, stay on with us. I know Triple yeah. D is going to leave. It's it's up to you, your discretion, uh, if you want to stick around. But we need to preview the number. We need to go to the one-minute chart, which I only do for big moments like this. So uh, huh. you want to stick around, Mark? Sure. I'm watching okay. the future. I'm going to go right. hide in the background for a few minutes. Mark, I'll probably be back, but thanks always. Yeah. Protect your capital, Dennis. Don't, don't That's what we try to do. We try to do. <laughs> <laughs> I love you guys. This is more fun than Okay, the let's do the flowers. setup here, Mark. The setup, we're a long ways from unchanged, so there's nothing there. That's also the pre-market high. So if you're reality 30 handles, keep an eye on there. What's, what's um, worrying me a little bit on the downside here, we're right near yesterday's low. If you take that out, it's 76.50. Man, there's just not I, – I have no two lows in the same area. That's what I'll say uh, uh, when you're looking at the daily chart. I'm going to keep my clock – you know, I'm going to put uh, – oh, uh, go to the daily for one second here. Before the number, the daily, as you can see right here, this is the area. Next yep. daily low, 51.67. After that, ah, there's another one at 51.55. Back to the one minute. We're all hoping for a light number, 13 seconds, 10. Here we are, just hanging above the lows of the session. Will the PPI bail us out? Hasn't been as an important number. And survey says. Uh-oh, looks like we're coming in. Let's see. 8.30, you should get the numbers here any second. Now I'm looking in my Benzinga Pro again. Uh, go check that out if you it want. It looks light. It looks light to me. Uh, U.S. PPI came in at 0.2% versus 0.3% estimated. It was six tenths of a percent prior. So that's a pretty big oh. drop month over month. Uh, core PPI came in in line at two tenths of a percent. U.S. PPI year over year for March came in at 2.1% versus 2.2%. We also had initial jobless claims come in at 211,000 versus 216,000. That was 222,000 prior. So, yeah, numbers, I mean, a lot better than yesterday. And the market is uh, responding well to that, Joel. Looks like maybe yeah. running out of some steam a little bit after that huge yeah. pop. But... Hey, I mean, if if you're bullish, then this is what you, you want to see. I'll yeah, just make yeah, one what... technical comment here. I waited until after 8:30. They hit yesterday's low, but they found buyers right under it. Now we're back in the 5200 handle. Need to take out unchanged in the Globex high. Mark, let's get your technical and fundamental thoughts after that number. Well, they, uh, the 5140 has now held on a closing basis, assuming they don't trade back down there. So, and that's 48 uh, points uh, differential in futures. So that that number is 5188 on the futures. Okay. So as long as you close above there, uh, the 
um, the uptrend's intact, the short-term uptrend, obviously, the intermediate to long is still very solid. So, uh, by the way, I was very cautionary in my monthly market insights that came out on Monday about the short term. This is the period that I was concerned about from second, first quarter earnings through the end of May, where I thought we would get very choppy, very volatile, and, and we alerted people to the fact, and we actually said if 5140 breaks on a closing basis on the cash, then tighten your stops and, and investors look to buy them. But I, I think we're solid. I think we're solid in yeah, theater. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just the only thing I'm looking here is like it doesn't look like the TLT is really biting on this. Uh, you did get a little bump up here. You're still red on the session, so there, you know, there's a, there's a rally. I mean, they're not going crazy on this. And then I'm looking at the IWM here. That hasn't gone. They just went green. The I, IWM went green there. S and P's are struggling to get green. I think it's really important for these to, you know, just get there. Get green, stay green, and catch a bit. It's a secondary number, but after yesterday's number, people were like, whew, you know, yeah. wow, looking for oh. something. And now we got earnings season, right? We can wipe yeah. the sweat off our brow. We get ready. We had Delta. They hit it off good earnings. We got the big banks on Friday. So, Mark, is it time just to, you know, get back to fundamentals and earnings and forget about all this interest rate, Michigas? I I love that, uh, uh, Shagas. It sure it certainly is. Yeah, I mean, focus on earnings here, but uh, also on the guidance, which is so critical uh, with the market at elevated levels. By the way, MDY. I'm looking at mid cap stocks. That's where Zebra slots in, and not small cap, but okay. mid cap growth stocks. I think are where the real uh, opportunities are, and if you compare uh, mid, if you pair mid cap growth stocks with AI, you end up with something like Zebra. And by the way, that's just got a neutral rating. I want to emphasize that. I don't normally talk about neutral rated power gauge stocks, but I think it'll go bullish shortly. So uh, it, it's an okay market here, short term. Intermediate term, I, I raised my price targets. By the way, I'm now at okay. um, fifty six hundred to fifty eight hundred for the year. So that's that's eight to eight to twelve percent above current levels in the SPY. So yeah, it's a bull I mean, market. If you want to be super bullish, you could say, "Hey, you know, we got a double bottom in from uh, the Globex low from yesterday and today." If you want to be super bullish, there's really not much. You know, limited resistance on the upside. Still haven't went green yet, but uh, Mark. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on for this extended period of time. Uh, always well. great information. Mark Chaikin, Chaikin Analytics, joining us every Thursday with his fundamental and technical outlook on the markets. Mark, we'll dial you up again soon. Yep, and Mark, I'll, to uh, Mark, I'll make sure to send you that clip of the restoration hardware and also, uh, the, and also the clip of you saying that I asked you the best question. I'm, I'll save that one for myself. Yeah. Oh, by the way, guys, I'm going to be uh, with my wife, Sandy, in Milan in two weeks. So we can either do next week or when I get back. I'm going for a week. Okay, okay. Let, me, uh, let me look at the schedule and um, I will, I'll send you a note, okay? Okay, great. Be well, guys. Have a good day, Mark. All right, guys, again, that was Mark Chaikin, Chaikin Analytics. Uh, go check out Chaikin Analytics for some more great calls, like that Restoration Hardware one. Always great to hear Mark's insights into the market. Uh, Joel, I'm going to pull your charts back up, see how we're doing after this. I was a little worried because, you know, it's like a rainy day. It's When it rains, it pours. Yesterday, we got the hot number. I was worried we were going to get hot again. At least, you know, I'm not saying we're going to rally super hard off this, but at least it wasn't super hot again and we're just getting crushed again two days in a row uh it you know it, it was so far it's been a, a dip and a little bit of a rip so if you know if you were patient and you, you know you didn't freak out when probably yesterday's low was taken out in a lot of stocks you're okay i mean this it's an important area here i mean you know you're you haven't gone green yet i would like you know you could i, I just don't see like the super enthusiasm but a lot of the liquidity hasn't come in yet I would like to see the IW, IWM, just as I said, it, it wasn't green. It's green now. So the money's flowing, you know, where it came out of yesterday. And, you know, NVIDIA, you know, seems to win uh, no matter what, what kind of scenario it is here. 823. But 
Um, we're just uh, moving up towards unchanged here. As I mentioned, uh, we are coming into earnings season here, but uh, we got a couple of important uh, reports today. So why don't, why don't we get to those? Um, let's do it real quick. Uh, we had fast and all report. Let me go ahead and pull up those numbers was looking at the uh, news feed for that, uh, for the PPI. So I got to get over to that real quick, but, uh, the numbers weren't good. It was a slight miss on, on both basically on, on sales and EPS, just a slight miss. Uh, EPS came in at 52 cents, missed the 53 cent estimate sales came in at 1.9 billion, missed the 1.91 billion. Uh, dollar estimate nothing really with uh you know guidance or anything like that i think it was just the slight miss was enough to bring the stock down and uh yeah we're seeing that trading about down about five percent yesterday after closing down one and a half percent yesterday so uh overall not a great week for fast and all but again the earnings weren't terrible it was kind of like that cpi data yesterday where it was just a slight miss it wasn't you know it's not like you know the biggest miss in the world but it's you know stock still getting hammered on it it is. And I mean, you got to keep things in perspective. I mean, beginning the year, you're at 62. You got over 78, a little bit of a pullback here. I'll give you the pre-market low comes in. Ooh, no. Let me see. Let me get my pre-market. I don't have my pre-market chart up here because I had the futures. Uh, let me get you the pre-market low. Ooh, wow. Well, I mean, it looks like a rally to me so far. It got to 68.61. What do you have? Do you have anything on the dailies there? You had 68.46. I mean, it's two and a half. But we've gone green here, folks. We have gone green. TLT has gone green. We're in an area of limited resistance now. There you go. Uh, IWM up a buck. Uh, fast and all. I mean, I don't know if I'd like be running to buy the open, but I do some daily support here at the $70 area. If you get some sellers off the open, let's call resistance. Uh, what was the bottom of yesterday's range? Ooh, that's going to take a while. That's up at 74.53. We're back up green by six handles now. Um, and then, so yesterday, you know, obviously this week, CPI number has been the biggest story. It's what brought us down yesterday. But when you went through the report, not everything was going higher. One of the things that actually retreated in price was used vehicles. And that's good news if you're buying a car. Not great news if you're selling the car. So let's go over to CarMax. Uh, CarMax reported earnings. Trading lower, stock down 9% after closing down 5% yesterday. Uh, EPS came in at only 32 cents against the 49 cent estimate. Sales came in at 5.63 billion against the 5.79 billion dollar estimate. Uh, so this stock's getting crushed now, down more than 12 percent in the last two days. Joel, what is the chart telling us? Well, the chart's telling you you're way off the pre-market low at 68.75, almost four bucks off that pre-market low. Uh, if you think if you were looking at your charts and you go, well, maybe I should throw a bit out there at 70. Well, you would have gotten popped because it went well below 70. Like I said, pre-market low 68.75. So if you felt you missed the dip there in this one and the more sellers come in and off the open ahead of the pre-market low, I see multiple lows surrounding the uh, 69 and a half to 70 dollar area. Uh, for CarMax coming back on the upside, same thing. You got a ways to go to get to the bottom of yesterday's range at seventy-eight ninety. I don't know. Is uh, just take a quick look at Carvana. Hmm. Carvana only down a buck off this, so uh, we'll see. We'll see if our Carvana could hold the rally. Not seemingly being affected that much by the CarMax earnings. And okay, so while, while while we're still talking about inflation, Joel, I have I've got an idea. Okay, I, I, I think the I Fed, love ideas. Okay, I think the Fed. I've got a couple guys. I think the Fed should maybe pull in as consultants to to help tackle inflation. You know who that is? Me and Dennis. Well, that was that's first, but I know you guys are busy, and I don't want to I don't want to have to do the show alone. So I, I went to number three and four. Okay, so number three is the guy who runs the concession stand at the Masters. Look at this. This is this is these are the prices for the Masters this year. Egg salad sandwich a buck 50, pimento cheese sandwich a buck 50, 
chicken biscuit, three dollars. Even even a beer, which you go to get a beer at any at any sporting event, it's like fifteen bucks, six dollars. Which okay, I, I that's still a little too expensive for me. I'd like that. I like to see that come down to like four dollars a beer. But I don't know what type of beer it is. Maybe it's a nice like local, you know, Georgia beer, whatever. Uh, peanuts a buck fifty, cookies a buck fifty. I don't know how, but Masters, you know, well, I do know how. It's probably because the tickets are so expensive. But exactly, they, they've been able to make the stay the concessions, keep the concessions down. That's got to be nice. At least once you get down there, you know, it probably cost an arm and a leg to get down there. But once you're there, it looks you can you can go you can go crazy at the snack shop at the snack shop. Well, the you know what they're also probably thinking smart, and someone's gonna say, "Wow, I got a breakfast sandwich, or I got two things for six bucks." Oh, here's a ten, or here's a twenty. You know, because they're taking, so they're they're making the money on the tips. Are you sure this is from this year? Yeah. Well, according to Golf Digest, at least I didn't do the reporting myself. Um, but uh, and 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 Atlanta and the Georgia, they have like a, a track record of doing this. Actually, at the stadium where the Falcons pay at they, or play at, they do really cheap concessions as well. Like a Coke is like three bucks and stuff. So hey, they they do some they do things they do some things right down in Georgia. I got to give a shout out to the Masters. The other guy, Joel, you're not gonna like this, Tom Brady. Just because he's got a history of, uh, of 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 deflation, so he he might be able to bring prices down a little bit. Oh boy, I hope you didn't stay up all night thinking of that one. No, that was. <laughs> I knew you wouldn't like that one. He made, uh, whatever, you can pick on Tom. He's been out of the news a little bit lately, huh? Well, after the FTX thing, I think he's laying low. But he's going to be back in. The, he's he's getting like a two hundred million dollar contract to be he'll a be broadcaster. He'll be back on CBS. Yep. Yeah. Yep. He'll be back. Uh, he'll be back in the fall. But uh, oh, yeah, Jay Jay brought up another good point. The the merchandise there is also pretty cheap, and you can't get it anywhere else. So people that do win the lottery or get to go to the Masters, they'll load up and buy like a bunch of shirts bring them home to their family and all this stuff because you can't like go online and buy master stuff straight from the website you basically have to buy it there but the concession or the uh, merchandise isn't that expensive down there either all right let's uh let's keep the earnings parade going on and uh let's have a drink to constellation brands earnings let's do it um what is the ticker for that joel stz STZ. I knew it was, I typed in star. I knew it was something, knew it was something like that. Yeah, uh, Constellation Brands EPS came in at two bucks and 30 cents, beat two, bu- uh, the two dollar and eight cent estimate. Sales came in at 2.14, beat the two dollar and 10 cent estimate. So people still drinking. People, uh, you know, uh, Constellation Brands, I think Corona's its biggest. Uh, beer that they do. Yeah. Corona and Modelo. So they have like kind of the, some of the Mexican lagers here. And I mean, uh, been been performing well, especially uh, when you look at other companies in the space. I mean, Sam, ticker SAM, has continued to just be a, a dog in this space. Um, Bud, of course, has been doing okay since the whole fiasco, you know, in the last year or so. But, um, you know, Constellation Brand looks like definitely a leader in this space. How's TAP doing? How's Molson Coors doing? Uh, let's see. Wasn't TAP supposed to come out? Oh, that's had a nice rally as of late here. Uh, Red Candle yesterday. Looks like... Ooh, uh, not daily, not weekly. I got a big monthly number for you tap traders. Keep an eye on 71. Three monthly highs in 2018. You peaked right at that area in July of last year, trying to get there too again. So if you're looking to a major leg higher here in tap, keep an eye on the $71 area. That's three and a half bucks away. But the stock we were talking about made a new all-time high. And if your target was the all-time high in Constellation Brands, and man, it had been up there a couple times, uh, 273.65 was your all-time high. That was actually back last year. Well, you exceeded that in the pre-market when you went to 274.80. So I, I'd wait. You know, I'd say, hey, you know, if they like this report, they're going to take it back to that all-time high. Maybe get over the, you know, uh, get over the pre-market high. If you're looking for a pullback and or you, maybe you're tempted to short this off the open, uh, keep an eye on 265.31. Uh, that's the top of yesterday's range. So Constellation Brands, you know, we talk about interest rate environments, right, that are good for some stocks and bad for some stocks. Well, it looks like 
market doesn't care about or constellation brands it's whether interest rates are higher or low people are still getting their suds and whatever else they sell beer and wine and what else do they do they sell just about everything don't they yeah constellation brand i mean they're, it's a huge company i mean i think let's see i, I modelo and corona are definitely its two biggest is it products. modelo or modelo modelo what i say modelo modelo yeah Okay. The company also owns a 30% stake in Canopy Growth, a uh, uh, cannabis. So they're all over the place. Constellation is basically the vice trade. You want to invest in beer and wine and weed and, you know, Constellation brands. You got it. Um, I, I mean, let's go to uh, let's go to some uh, analyst ratings. Joel, Nike getting some love here. Let me pull yeah. that up. Bank of America Securities, B of A Securities upgrades Nike to buy, raises price target mm. to a a hundred and thirteen dollars. So that's some nice upside from ninety bucks. About you know a little bit less than twenty percent there. Um, Nike's been a dog recently. Just been getting kind of. I mean, you got the huge run up with everything else in two thousand twenty one. Got to a hundred and eighty dollars a share. Now back below a hundred. I I mean, look. I think as people might be you know, getting kind of hurt in other places, spending more at the grocery store, spending more at the pump. I mean, I haven't been buying as many shoes recently or, or been looking at some expensive nikes but at the end of the day nike's one of those brands like when, when disney was getting crushed or, or joel i look at disney and i'm like eventually the companies that you know aren't going anywhere mm -hmm. you got to get a bounce in eventually i know nike's not going anywhere i know in 20 years people are still going to be wearing nikes i'm probably still going to be buying nikes in 20 years um so eventually you know I, I think this stock is a buy i don't know if it's right now although looking at the chart joel i see it kind of a, a triple buy. i know here. I, this is i don't mind calls like this right i mean because they had tight they had come out after the earnings report and say oh you know you just gotta buy the dip they look for a little bit of a technical analysis you came down uh you got uh you got three lows and then four low no no three lows Wow, no, three lows, same area, triple bottom there. You're two bucks away for it. If you're a big believer in Bank America, if you're a big believer in Nike, here's a catalyst. Here's a stock that's fallen very hard after its last two earnings reports. Big gap down, maybe a little bit of seller exhaustion here. So I it, it's it's a con it's a contrary call. You know, I like it. It's going to it's uh it's going it's going with it. So uh, pre-market high, boom, is up right right, right near the pre-market high. Now, pre-market high is 91.20. Uh, what do you got on the dailies here? Boom. Uh, 91.20, 91.16 is your two-day high. So if you think this is going to be a love fest for Nike today, you get through that area, then things open up considerably on the upside, really to the $94 area. If you're saying, hey, this is a little bit too high of an open, I want to get in a little bit cheaper, the top of yesterday's range was back at 90.10. But, you know, he, oh, if, you, if you're short, you're thinking, oh, man, you know, I was trying to bring it in under 89 for the last three or four days. Maybe I have to up my bid to 90. And, so, and go ahead. I was just going to say from the fundamental, I mean, maybe part of the reason the stock's been getting so beat up is uh, – you do have a more competition. You've got on on. You have Hoka's from Deck coming in. Yep. You have Brooks. Someone mentioned they run. I mean, run with that. so Nike. Well, here's the thing with Nike is I think for a while, for like people that are really into running, marathon runners, you know, people that run, you know, daily five miles a day, etc. Nike hasn't even really done that well in that specific market. It's been more of like kind of a, you know, people just wear them because or buy them because they think they look cool. So I think it's okay that, you know, you have some of these other stocks or other companies coming in. And again, like maybe eating into its market share a little bit. But overall, like I said, you know, Nike has the stay in power. You know, it's going to be around 10 years from now. Right. Uh, regardless right, right, of, the, right. of people. I, I just full, full disclosure, I did buy a new Nike tank top uh, okay. online, but I did have a gift certificate for it. So I didn't spend any of my, my own money. Triple D, you back? Exact opposite of yesterday. The exact opposite. They've been just buying and buying and all the interest rate sensitive stuff because the information, the new information that we just got comes in the exact opposite way. And this is what we talk about. You know, it's all about the information and trading the information as quickly. Remember I said yesterday, for the first 20 minutes, I was just selling as much stuff as I could. And the last 20 minutes, I'm just buying as much stuff as I could. 
because it's the exact opposite. Like just, and this is the trading. Nothing didn't make any trades in the long term portfolio. I'm not sitting here. Ah, oh, let's go see what we want to invest in. No, no, we're trading. Buy, 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 buying forward, buying, you know, buying all these stocks, American Airlines, you know, buying whatever the hell I could buy, you know, flat on that number. Let's grab, 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 grab. And that's what trading is about. Trading on the new information. We had new information counter going exact opposite to what we saw yesterday. Yep. So take the playbook from yesterday and flip it upside down. <laughs> that's what we're probably doing. You look, they're all buying. Give me Nvidia. Give me Nvidia today. Give me Nvidia. No, uh, Nvidia. You guys are dumb pre-market traders. Just like you were selling it yesterday, you're dumb here today because this is not the stock to buy on this information. So Nvidia rallying here, and again talking about the long-term portfolio, not touching on long-term portfolio. First in. Not long-term portfolio, but as a trade here, not buying NVIDIA on this data because you're going to be buying more inflation. Now, again, if you know we flip and the TLT, and the TLT has only come up a little bit, to your point, I was listening to you as you were talking, not rallying that much, not getting nearly all the losses back as of yesterday, and neither is the IWM. So is this you know the opportunity where you flip Muted. out of all that stuff you bought yesterday? Maybe. Muted. Yep. Maybe. But... I'm definitely not buying NVIDIA on this number. And that's what they're doing in the pre-market. Like, where did NVIDIA just trade to? So just showing you how to trade here, folks. We're teaching you how to trade right now. It popped up over uh, the it popped up in that last bracket to 878.84. Yeah. Like people the algos just go buy. The algos aren't as smart as everybody thinks they are. They just grab and they buy. And then the money managers come in and they do the separation because you know what? Humans are still smarter than computers. They do the separation like they did yesterday and saying, well, why is NVIDIA down 30 bucks on inflation data? Because it's not going to be impacted as much. Exactly what we talked about. Well, why is NVIDIA trading up 8, 10 bucks on it then? You know, on the exact opposite thing. I wouldn't be surprised if NVIDIA goes red. I'm exact opposite as yesterday. Not saying I'm selling out, you know, and I'm, oh my gosh, I got to sell all my NVIDIA. It's going to go down 2%. But there's tradable opportunities here, folks. And that's what we're trying to do is just, you know, teach you to trade here on this show. We're trying to teach you to become better investors, but we're also trying to teach you to trade better. So, like, you if know you, there's what? a lot Doesn't of people who want to do this for a living. This, this move here a little bit. I mean, it, it's a nice move, and it, you know, and we're moving up here. But doesn't yeah. it seem like it's a little bit more muted than like the downside? For sure, move? because yeah. CPI is much more important than PPI. But it was a pretty wicked pop. I mean, the IWM was down two boxes, now up a box. It was a three point rally in the IWM on this number. That's fairly significant. Um, you you know, maybe you're selling the stuff you flipped out of yesterday. Maybe we're going to go into this environment where we're going to just chop around a little bit more. That that could be the environment we're entering here too. I don't think I'm chasing. I don't think I'm coming in here and chasing. Like at 8.30, I'm trying to buy stuff that's down because I'm like, they're going to buy these stocks that are interest rate sensitive because this is the exact opposite of yesterday. You know, and I'm being rewarded for that already. That's why I'm gone for 20 minutes because I'm like trying to, Trade actually. You know what it was nice Calming too down is working that out of those trades. You know, maybe the into this down, now. The move, like the, there was that little head fake, and I got my new trick now. I don't make a call until eight thirty, even because they're like yesterday they had that fake pop, and then they slammed it. So I waited, and they hit it a little bit, but it hit it like just below yesterday's low, and then immediately, boom. It was back up off yesterday's low. So there really wasn't much of a head fake to the downside. Um, I looked at, uh, let's just look at some of the interest rate sensitive stocks. SEDG up 80 cents. That didn't have a bad day yesterday, though. Um, ENPH, uh, that's trading in the green, a buck 70. Think three to one, the IWM. When I'm trading those things, I think three to one. So that makes sense. ENPH up 1.4%, IWM's up 0.42%. Think three to one. You know, if I'm pairing that up off of an interest rate on so I'm thinking three to one. If the IWM moves two percent, that thing could move six percent. I don't think the IWM is getting all back though. To your point, Joel, it's yeah. not as important. It's a muted response. I just think you've seen the pop already. Like you've kind of seen a pretty good pop here. I don't think we're getting all of yesterday's losses back. Maybe you think back to the fifty percent retracement. I mean, we go two oh five, we lose the two hundred down to one ninety nine, two oh two, two oh three on the IWM. Mm -hmm. You start thinking even yesterday's high. Maybe that's a better area, 202.93, like looking at the highs. Another buck up from here, I'm probably unloading all the stuff I bought yesterday if I was a trading, like if I was swing trading overnight. Yep, that that's uh that's a buck twenty away. Um the S and P's have a little bit of a differential because the 
the pre-market high was way up there at 2385. But if you're looking for a similar level um, yeah. in the S&P, we're only uh, boom, boom, boom. We're, we are not too far away. The interday high from yesterday is only 10 handles away, folks. So that could be easy. And then you get into a real good open area. Uh, we got four minutes left here. And now, you know, now that we seemingly survived the inflation storm, uh, Dennis, uh, earnings season. I just wanted to talk about another good. Sometimes you're really hot. Sometimes you're not. But that Delta, man. It got grounded right off the Not number. Right off the open. But the yeah, number. yep. We said yep. we'd be selling it. That was before the number. And then the number obviously helped that call. So I didn't even think about, you know, like I was touting my NVIDIA call. I didn't even mention that one. But yeah, we called that right on the button. The old high, kissed it, 49.24, 49.19, the high from a few days ago. And then it starts to leak it back here. So you never want to see a key reversal on earnings. But the airlines are notorious for this. I mean, all trading is, is pattern recognition and it's best. Like, that's what it is, Joel. Every single trade, you could take all the strategies and throw them all in there. They're all basically like pattern recognition is all it is. Even to market making, you know, all retail buys, sells on the bid and the ask. So pattern recognition, I'm going to be selling on the bid and the ask. I mean, all it is, is pattern recognition. And that's what the Delta, we were looking at it. Well, airlines, every single quarter seem to blow it away. And every single quarter, they seem to give it back. Well, that worked again. So just identify the patterns and then just trade off of what has worked in the past. And then, uh, okay, so we, we got a we got a big day on the docket tomorrow, right? You got uh, you got J.P. Morgan, Citigroup, Wells Fargo, BlackRock, State Street, and PGR all in the morning. Now, uh, just taking a look at uh, the J.P. Morgan here. Uh, probably found a little bit of support yesterday. People uh, leading into the print. Uh, let's, see, let's just take a look, man. Major resistance up 200. Does the, what does what the market's done in the last two days? I know you like your your pre earnings runs. Does it does that the price action you had yesterday maybe temper that yeah. strategy from yesterday? Yeah, yeah, that strategy. The pre earnings run works very well when the market. It works awesome when the market is ripping higher and you're in this full on bull market, can't stop. You know that strategy really works well. It tends to outperform even in bear markets. It tends to be that bias up, but it doesn't work. And definitely in the last few days, it's not working nearly as well as it has. And you got to lay off. You know when you're in a bull market and the stocks are going. That strategy of owning stocks ahead of reports works really, really well. When you're in a bear market or you're just in a sideways market where the market's cooling off a bit, strategy doesn't work nearly as well. So you've got to know the market. Every single strategy, unless you're, you know, Citadel market making, every single strategy, you know, works sometimes and then doesn't work as well in other environments. I mean, even market making, you know, works very well when the VIX is elevated because you're getting wider spreads. So, you know, it's just, you know, you got to have like a core toolbox of trading strategies and then you know which ones to employ went for the typical market environment i mean right now it's kind of sideways to down right now so you're right joel that strategy isn't working nearly as well well joel you mentioned tomorrow we've got a lot of the big bank earnings the start of q1 earnings season which i think I think this is good timing because we've been talking so much about the Fed and interest rates. And, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty there. There's going to be less certainty once we start getting some of these earnings in because, you know, th this could be the next big catalyst that will move the market either, you know, the next leg higher or bring us, keep pulling us back in a little bit if earnings, you know, come in light across the board. And I'm I'm interested to see the reaction as if, the numbers are like oh like good or in line if the stocks get hammered because like the fast and all earnings were it was just a tiny miss on both sides and the stock kind of got hammered on it so if that's how the market is reacting to all other earnings like if JP Morgan comes in in line or slightly lighter and it gets hammered then maybe you know that that sign that the market is pulling back here so uh, I'm excited to have some more catalysts on the way. I think it's just, um, you know, it's a report on the right day too. Like in Fastenal, if we were ripping, you know, earlier and Fastenal reported now, but Fastenal reported before the number and they already priced it, the price discovery happened before the number. If they were to come out right now, like two hours later with those same numbers, does it get hit as hard? Probably not. But again, a miss is a miss is a miss. You know, a duck is a duck, whatever. And, you know, when you miss the top and the bottom, you're probably going to go down a bit. Yeah. Would you buy the tip on Fastenal, Joel? 
Uh, for long term or short term? Or any term. For, for, <laughs> right, for any term. term. I have a trading hot investing hat. I'll do either. Tell me what yeah, to do. I, I wouldn't buy it long term, but I've never bought it. But if I was trying to day trade it, I'd like to, I'd, I'd try and hold out for 69 to have 50 and then so, maybe get a little bit of a pop. Who do yes. we have coming on with us tomorrow? Well, what do we now need in this market environment? Like a lot of things are going on. The market's going up and down. Wouldn't it be good to get some new statistics? That was a big hint, guys. Who do you think our guest Ryan is? Dietrich. Ryan Dietrich. Yep. Stat man. Stat man do. Let's do it. All right. Well, guys, thanks for tuning in to the, today's show. Shout out to Mark Chaikin for joining us during that uh, 830 PPI print. Uh, we will be back again tomorrow. We've got a lot coming. We've got bank earnings to talk about. We're going to have some great stats from Ryan Dietrich and probably hear about why we shouldn't be too worried right now, if I had to guess. Uh, and guys, again, smash the like if you haven't already. Live trading will be starting up after this. Dennis, any final thoughts as we head into the day? Drop. I think you're going to get chopped. Keep an eye on the TLT. It's the lie detector test for the IWM, and it's not rallying much here. That is somewhat concerning. It's up a little bit. You want to see that sustained. Um, if, you know, the TLT can continue to rally, IWM will follow suit here. So just keep an eye on that. Um, other than that, remember rotations. You know, if, you know, it's all about rotations. If the IWM stays high, TLT can stay up here. Then you start to think, well, maybe they hit the mega cap tech trade. So that's, you know, all about rotations. Some of these stocks are moving opposite to what, you know, the IWM is doing. All right, guys, that'll be a wrap on today's show. Again, live trading starts right after this. We'll see you tomorrow morning.